Let's say you compile all the marks your class got on a recent test into a list and observe the frequency of each mark. Maybe there were 380s, 273s, 199. If you represent this data you've collected on a plot of frequency versus grade, it may look something like this. If this is the mean, we know that this point is close and this point is far. But wouldn't it be nice if we had some standard measure of the spread of the data so that we could communicate just how far away these points, hmm, I don't know, deviate from the mean? Oh, <laughs> look at that. The standard deviation of a data set allows you to determine how close the values in a data set are to the mean of the data. We use the symbol sigma for standard deviation. Now at the risk of scaring you off, here is a list of scary and similar looking formulas that can be used to calculate standard deviation. <sighs> Originally I wanted to name this video Attack of the Horrible Tedious Lookalike Formulas. It has a nice ring to it, but it did not go over well with my test group, which essentially consists of my cat, who had this to say. When you look at all of these formulas, it seems like you're looking at one of those spot the difference picture games you used to play when you were a kid. Like this one of Mario and Luigi. Or is it Luigi? We can separate these formulas, formulae, into two columns, population and sample. We use these when we've collected data from an entire population, like our entire class or our entire town. And we use these when we have only a sample of the population, like some students from our class or some people from our town. Now these top two formulas deal with something called variance, which by definition is really just the square of standard deviation. So let's ignore these to keep this video focused on standard deviation. Now these two formulas are probably the most famous standard deviation formulas. What this says is take each data value in the set, subtract the mean, and square it. Do that for each data value in the set, add them all together, and divide by the number of data values in the set. If you take the square root of that value, you get the standard deviation for your population. This formula on the right behaves the same way, with different symbols. X bar is used to represent the mean instead of the symbol mu, and S is used for sample standard deviation, as opposed to the sigma used for population standard deviation. One other thing to note with sample standard deviation is that instead of dividing by the total number of data values, or the entire population, we divide by the number of data values we have, minus one. And just for funsies and to make things easier, but really actually make things more complicated, we have two additional formulas that can be used to calculate the standard deviation for both a population and a sample. This says take each individual data value in the set and square it, and add all of these together. We then subtract the number of data values in our set times the mean squared. As was the case with the sample standard deviation formula, this formula is exactly the same with the x-bar, s, and lowercase n symbols to indicate sample standard deviation. Here's a proof of these alternate formulas that I estimate less than 1% of the total viewers shown here actually care about. So you know how to calculate standard deviation. Let's apply what we've talked about to an example. So you have the marks out of 20 for a class of students. We're being asked to calculate the mean and standard deviation. Now because I have the marks out of 20 for a class of students, we can assume that this data set represents the entire class. Because we're working with the entire class, it makes sense to use either of the population standard deviation formulas, both of which require us to calculate the mean before proceeding. Remember, the mathematical definition of mean or average is take the sum of all of the data and divide by the number of data values. I won't go over that calculation in this video to keep it brief, but we can say that our mean in this case is 16.5, so that's our class average. I'll look at the first standard deviation formula first. To calculate standard deviation, we take each data value, we'll start with 16, we subtract the mean, and we square the result. We repeat this process for each data value in the set, adding the results together and dividing by the number of data values, in this case 20. Some careful calculator work will give me 1.36 as my standard deviation. I can also choose to use the second standard deviation formula, which behaves in a similar way. I can take each data value in the set and square it, and add them all together. I can subtract the number of data values times the mean squared, and divide by the number of data values. After taking the square root of all of that, you'll see that you also get 1.36. So both of these standard deviation formulas give us the same result. So we found our mean and we found our standard deviation. But what does the standard deviation really mean in this case? We know that standard deviation is a measure of how close the values in a data set are to the mean, but does that really help us understand and analyze the data set that we're looking at? Let's ask the question, which marks are more than one standard deviation away from the mean? More than one standard deviation away from the mean means I can take the mean and subtract the standard deviation and also look at the mean plus the standard deviation. Doing this results in 15.14 and 17.86. Well, time to pack it in, because man, those are some sweet, arbitrary, rounded to two decimal place numbers. But what does this mean? Remember, standard deviation is supposed to help us analyze the spread of the data. 
If we represent the data visually and look at the frequency versus the marks in this class, we know the mean is 16.5. We just calculated that any mark below 15.14 is more than one standard deviation away from the mean on the lower end of the data set. And we know that any mark greater than 17.86 is more than one standard deviation away from the mean in the upper range of the data set. Remember the problem at the beginning of this video? We were able to say that this data value is close to the mean, and this data value is far. But now that you've learned how to calculate standard deviation, we can communicate just how far away from the mean these data values are. Sorry if that's a bit of an underwhelming revelation. Kind of like the series finale of Lost. Seriously, it's been eight years and I'm still not over it. But I mean, we're talking about statistics here. Sometimes they're not really all that exciting. But this is exciting because we now have a way of looking at these data values and communicating using a standard measure just how close or far away they are from the mean. When analyzing a set of data, this is very powerful. For this particular set of data, we know that this student is far away from the mean. In particular, there are three standard deviations above the mean. This particular student is also far away from the mean, but we could say they're not as far because there are only two standard deviations above the mean. This student is far away from the mean as well, but in this case, there are three standard deviations below the mean. To summarize, standard deviation is really just a comparative communication tool that we use to see how close or far away we are from the average. This is part of what we do on a daily basis as people live in an organized society. With defined standards and rules for behavior, it's only natural that we compare ourselves to others and trying to quantify in some way just how far away we are from some arbitrary standard. Social comparison theory tells us that comparing ourselves to others and measuring up short causes much of the stress and anxiety that currently plagues this generation of people. We compare ourselves to the neighbor that makes more money than us and drives a nicer car. We compare ourselves to our own expectations of ourselves that are warped by the media and other stakeholders in our destinies. However, comparison allows for reasonable laws of behavior that keep society from plunging into an uncontrollable, barbaric free-for-all where it's okay to engage in whatever primal urge we feel at any given point in time. Alright, this was supposed to be a math tutorial on how to calculate standard deviation. Moral of the story here is set your own standard of beauty or excellence and avoid making comparisons to the successes of others or the images you see on social media and making conclusions about your self-worth in the process. Because you are special and there is no mathematical formula that can quantify just how special, unique, and valuable you are. Thanks for watching.